You might be wondering, what is something that you can learn from working at one of the biggest sports events in the world? Well, I'm here to break down three event lessons that I learned from working at the Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympics this past year, yes, in 2021, in Tokyo itself, and things that I think you as event professionals in our event community could learn even from some of these larger scale events. I'm also going to share a little tidbit of my favorite story personally that happened during the Olympics. So if you stick around till the end, you'll be able to hear that one. But I promise you, these are three tangible things that you can apply to your event business, no matter if you're working conferences, weddings, birthday parties, personal events, corporate events, whatever. It doesn't have to be the Olympics, but these are lessons that I learned through my time in Tokyo. So stick around. Before we get into it, I do want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. You can also head over to loganstrategygroup.com to learn more about the kind of event I do, or if you have any questions about your upcoming virtual, hybrid, or in-person event, there's a perfect link on there that'll get you to book 20 minutes with me, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about your setup because we're all here to grow and learn together. Also, if you like more free content, I'm a co-host of the Better Events Podcast with fellow event pro Mary Davidson. So head over, give that a listen wherever you listen to podcasts. But without further ado, let's get back into those event lessons. So before I share those lessons, I do have to get this off my chest that this was a lifelong dream of mine to work for the Olympics. And yes, I was hired by the Tokyo Olympic Committee. I'd volunteered in 2018 at the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, and that was with Team USA. And I'll link below to where you can always find volunteer opportunities with Team USA. But my dream as a kid had been to compete at the Olympics. And that, as my athletic adventures kind of uh, petered out, I would say then my goal turned into wanting to be an event professional. Because one of the things that drew me to the Olympics is if you've ever produced an event, a single event, the Olympics is like that times 500 like so many there's just so many things happening at once there's the competitions themselves there's a bunch of fan engagement activities there are different kind of receptions there's a lot of stuff that happens uh, politically with a lot of the different governments and countries coming together there's sponsor activations there is like it's an event planner producer's dream honestly to work as a part of this event so my goal had always been to be a part of it in some capacity I wasn't sure how and then I've fallen in love with this sports production uh, vein, which is doing all the entertainment side inside the arena. Before I digress too much, a lot of that production background has been applied to what I share with you all when it comes to virtual and hybrid and non-sporting events. It applies to sports, but it really does apply to everyone. And same with these three tips. So my first tip that I have for you is if you are planning an event, making sure that you set up some form of faster or expedited approval process for any kind of assets or deliverables or things that you need during the event. And so what am I mean by this? If you were giving the client time to give you PowerPoints for these presentations, maybe ahead of the event, you gave them two weeks, but when you're actually in the event, it goes, no, I need to have it within these two hours. And having a process for what that looks like. Where do they send it to you? How do you get it? This is something in the Olympics that was really important because with sports, we got highlight clips, we got uh, team names were changing again because of COVID with different athletes coming. And so we needed to have something that was faster than what we'd been doing in the pre-planning of the event. One example of this could be instead of sending updates via email, because I'm sure you'll be getting lots of emails during your event, is setting up maybe like a nightly meeting or a nightly check-in. Or if you don't even have time for a meeting, a form that everybody on your team can fill out that just gives you a rundown of what was happening in all the different aspects of the event. Anytime I've worked a multi-day event, I will say the like nightly debrief or the morning meeting is a great way just to get everyone synced up on the same page, make real-time adjustments, and this expedites whatever approval process that you had before the event and gets you out of your inbox. So think about that for your next multi-day event or even if you had a one-day event but just wanted to do a quick sync over lunch or something like that. But I found it really, really helps you in the moment to come up with a shortened process for all these things. And my next, and I probably don't talk about it a lot in my videos, is Things are gonna go on a court, not according to plan. I love as a planner, we love making plans, run of shows, timelines, whatever it is. But some of the joy of what we do is when things go wrong, how do we react? 
And so that's something with the Olympics, with the live sports, one of the reasons I love it so much is we can script it, but you never know what's gonna actually happen in a game. And I was working indoor volleyball, the athletes were still having a lot of passion, but we ended up not having any fans. And so we had to adjust some of our in-game plan because we no longer needed to entertain a stadium of people. We really just needed to entertain the athletes and make sure it looked good on TV. And so one of the things that I found when people get frustrated with changes or unsure of what to do, always just trust yourself, trust your gut, remain calm and stay positive. And if there's ways that you can just bring that calming energy to your team, you'll find whether you're the leader of your team or just a member of your event team, you will make a positive impact because trust me, no one wants someone on their team who's panicking when things go wrong because I promise you things will go wrong. So making sure that you are prepared ahead of time of what you're gonna do, having that plan B, I'll link to my video, that's all about having backup plans and why they're important, but just knowing that things will go wrong, even on the biggest stage for, sport, for sports, the Olympics, things will go wrong and you'll have to adjust. And my last, <laughs> Thing that I took from uh, as an event lesson for event vendors and I don't think we talk about it enough is it's okay to be tired it is okay to be tired at the Olympics or whatever the version of the Olympics is for you maybe that is a really busy wedding season or if that's a really big conference or a big client project that you were just so excited to do but you get to the end and you realize you're tired and that's okay. That is something I struggled with, honestly, when I was in Tokyo because I was having so much fun. I loved what I was doing, but the days were long and there were lots of consecutive days in a row. And it was just one of those things that I realized I felt bad saying it because I was doing my dream gig. But then every time I voiced that to somebody, you know, in kind of my inner circle, they were all like, that's okay. You're allowed to be tired. It's okay to be doing your dream job and to be tired. And I know one of the big things that made news in Tokyo was Simone Biles from the US gymnastics team and her choosing not to compete in certain times because she had the, the twisties or their version for gymnastics. It would essentially be like maybe not tired, but essentially her mental game felt off. Something fell off for her, but it's probably similar to burnout. We talk about burnout a lot in, as like professionals, but I don't think we talk about it so much in events because so much of us is bringing, like I said, my last point, bringing that calming energy, that positive attitude, even when things go wrong, we are not the people who panic, but it's still okay to be tired at the end of the day. It's okay to wake up and need an extra coffee to get going. And so I just, this third lesson is really more for you just to take home as an event vendor and give yourself some grace. Let yourself know it's okay if you're feeling a little tired. Take that time after to recharge. That's something I'm personally working on is trying to figure out how much time do I need to recharge based on how long an event is because as much as I love to believe I'm Wonder Woman, <laughs> I do need that time uh, to rest up. As promised, if you've stuck with me this far, I will say I'm gonna share my favorite memory from the Tokyo Olympics. And this is, if you, if you know me, you know I love mascots, like I think, I don't feel like it's get it's a job if I'm around sports. I extra don't feel like it's a job if I get to work with mascots. And the Tokyo the Tokyo Olympic mascot, I'll show a picture of him here. He was this like adorable little blue and white. I don't even know what they they don't even know what kind of animal he is. But we got to play him in a lot of videos that we had that we showed like an animated him doing all the Olympic sports. And because of COVID, we didn't have the mascots actually there in person. And on one of my highlight reels one day, I was looking and they were showing highlights from our arena. And I was like, that's, there's the mascot. And it was a little robot that was the mascot. And they'd actually would take him to different events and put him in the stands. And because he was a robot, they trained him to like clap and cheer and he could make hearts in his eyes. And so I'm just gonna share this video with you of uh, me getting to meet that lovely little mascot. Monster block. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He can do monster block. That's so cute, monster block. Oh. Thank you. So cute. Thank you. So if your heart didn't explode into a million pieces like like mine did in that moment, that's fine. Totally okay. Uh, but this was still probably hands down my favorite most amazing moment that happened to me during the Olympics. And I'm hoping to build more of those memories at future sporting events, hopefully future Olympic games. Cap, I wanna list out those three lessons that you can apply to your event business from the that I learned at the Tokyo Olympics. Number one would be have an expedited version of whatever processes you have pre-event that you can execute during your event to save time, whether it be meetings or check-in forms every night or something to keep you all on the same page because I promise you will not have the time for what you were doing before the event when you're actually in it. 
And my second one is things are going to go not according to plan and you're going to have to deal with it. But if you can remain calm and positive, you're going to be able to make that positive impact on your team no matter what happens. And I promise you, things go wrong even on the biggest stages. So it's okay if it happens at your event. And my last lesson was it's okay to be tired even if you're working your dream job for your dream client. Tiredness is okay and that doesn't mean you don't love what you're doing at all. If anything, it just means you need to build in some time to rest and recharge afterward. That's all I have for you folks. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and this has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. As always, I'll drop new videos every single Monday. Let me know in the comments what you think below if you have more questions about the Olympics or just event planning in general. I'm here to help and talk to you guys again next week. Bye.